Watch. Literally. Oh. It's Friday. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up with another painting tutorial on the literal best of all days. On this Friday morning, we have a special tutorial. We're gonna do some tanks. I can't remember the last time I did a couple of tanks. We're gonna jump into five simple tricks to painting a tank chassis. Obviously, Next Level Painting style. So, mistake me if I'm wrong, but this might be the new year. It might be 2016, I just wanna say, Thank you guys for getting me through 2015. We started this channel uh, early 2015. We've made it to a new calendar year. Very excited. The Patreon page has been popping off. The support has been helping me keep it down. Off the heels of a very relaxing Christmas. Spent it with my lady's family up in the mountains of Colorado. Getting back to nature Viking style. All the nice comments you guys have been leaving have been very, very special to me. I want to just thank every one of you guys. Thank you. I do this for you guys. Promise. As I've said a thousand times, don't do it for money, but it takes money to do this. Having said that, check out thelongboard.net. That is your exclusive portal for bringing hobby back. All the early access, all the exclusive access. We've got the podcasts, we've got the webcasts, we've got the tutorials, we've got the battle reports. It's all two weeks early. Some of those videos you can only find in the Hall of Veterans. We've even got new partnerships. We got 40K Scribe, we got the Basement Collective, and of course, we got Southern Painting. We got all sorts of new stuff in 2016. Anyway, let's jump right into this. Here it is guys, five simple tricks to painting tank chassis. Tip one, get your primer game on lock. I'm using Army Painter, dark green, and basic um, silver paint from Home Depot, ancient Chinese trick. Get good coverage, spray these guys, multiple thin coats, I don't have to tell you guys, everyone knows that a prime models. We're gonna start this show off with IOS and green. This is one of the signature greens of the next level painting process. We're going to come in and you're going to just start establishing the highlights with IOS and green. Find all the little peaks of all the little, um, you know, 90 degree angles along those lines that GW vehicles are known for. And just start building in a nice subtle highlight. Don't overthink it. Most of my highlighting is just for aesthetics. I don't really think about how light actually interacts with anything. I prefer to just go with my heart. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. What can I say? So build them up, be subtle, uh, but don't overthink it, like I said, because we have um, another ancient trick I'm gonna hit you with here in a minute. But before we get to that trick, we're gonna go into Necrotite Green. This is the ultimate green. This is the greatest green in the, uh, green in the game as far as I'm concerned, I love this green. We're gonna go in there and we're gonna keep building that highlight up now. We're gonna go in, uh, you know, trace the same highlight we just did, but make it brighter. <laughs> it's super simple, right? Like I said, it's not science. And I'm not a scientist anyway. So build that green up. This is where you kind of want to be even more subtle than you were before. You really want to pop that green out. You want to create that incredible contrast. This is what this green combination is all about. My hyper green. Love it or hate it. I'm still teaching um, how to make colors pop. The trick here is finding colors that highlight each other without doing simple things like adding white to them. That's a really beginner and a real basic mistake is to just say, hey, I'm gonna add white to this color, that makes it brighter, right? It technically does, and in some cases it works just fine. But for some of your most vibrant colors, it ruins them. It'll ruin green, it'll ruin red, you know? It'll ruin a lot of colors, like yellow. Uh, it'll make blues pastel. You gotta really uh, research the colors first. And this is this research has been done for you. Ios and green, necrotite green, over a dark green. Literally, neon, nuclear, Toxic Avenger Green right here. But we're not done, obviously. I got a couple more tricks to make it a pop. 
but we are moving into our next uh, trip. So a little precursor to that trick. Um, a lot of times on big flat surfaces, you'll get speckling when you're trying to create those transitions. And that is sometimes unavoidable uh, when you're using these non airbrush paints. So here's a trick right here. Simple trick two is the mid-tone. This is really important on these big tanks. We're going back in time to iOS and green. And now we're gonna reestablish the mid-tone. That is iOS and green, which is between the dark green primer and necrotite green. We're gonna go in there and kind of just basically re-blend the two colors together. And this will kind of go over the splatter of the necrotite green because bright colors have a bad habit of doing that splatter as they come through your airbrush they dry up on the tip they kind of disrupt the flow of additional paint throwing out some speckles kind of you know taking detracting from the smooth transition as it were you know this is like i said this is a problem with non-airbrush paints especially the privateer press paints are real thick so you know i'm using a real thin application here of eyes and green it's really watery and just very subtly wiping out the speckling. I'm not trying to distort what I did, I'm just trying to wipe it out. Go back in there, erase any of this bullshit that you saw. You're like, so if you've ever been painting with the airbrush and you saw that speckling on your big tanks and you didn't know what to do, now you do. Simple trick number two, the mid-tone. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna carefully wipe out those colors, like I said. We're gonna flip the tank all over into different angles. We might even discover some places that we didn't hit with the green the first time anyway. So this is also a solid second pass. You know, getting up under those overhangs on the sides of this chassis, I didn't hit them with enough green, I noticed. Uh, my primer even escaped, so I'm just kind of reestablishing, like I said. And of course, I always work in, I always, I don't just paint one model at a time. So obviously we're working on two wyverns at once. Uh, that's just how we do here at Next Level Painting as part of the process, quantity and quality combined in a beautiful marriage. Now we're gonna be moving into um, simple trick number three. And this is ancient, ancient Next Level Painting. You gotta make those colors pop. A lot of people be like, damn, that's really bright. That's a lot of contrast. Psych, we can go one notch up. We're gonna pop that highlight. And this is like what I'm talking about. Find something that's not white. Find a color that truly interacts with what you are trying to do here. Moon yellow or whatever, it used to be called bad moon yellow. This yellow from GW is still the best yellow. Like I, I use it over all of the yellows for doing this effect. I'm gonna go in there, thin it down, throw a little flow improver in there, and I'm gonna really peek those highlights out. I'm gonna pick out the little areas and the centers, like we're like right in this, that radial of those highlights. And I'm just gonna subtly build it up and it's gonna make that green glow. That is that super green, that glowing green. That is like that, that's that green that people online are like, yo, it's the worst green I've ever seen or it's the best green. You don't know how you feel about it, but you feel something when you see it. And it's my favorite green. I just love it, that super lime neon green. I love pairing that with pinks and purples as you've seen in the past. Let's move on. We're gonna go with um, Army Painter, uh, plate metal plate metal. I've been using this metal a lot. I really like it. It goes on really easily No clumps Has a real solid finish like it's a good metal I'm really impressed with the armor painter lineup Like I said these guys they sent me a bunch of products to try out review and so far. I love them all Go in Find the metal. This is the part of painting the tank chassis. That is really the grind Paint by numbers. Everything you want to paint metal, paint it metal. And this is kind of, like I said, a, a simple trick in itself, a uh, mini simple trick. Uh, you can kind of cheat a little bit. You can get away with painting a lot of things metal, but you got to be prepared to do the work though. Find them, paint them, be as precise as possible. What I, what I mean by paint by numbers is, is you're trying to just stick to these panels, stay inside the lines. Every time you stray outside the line, you get a piece of metal on the green finish that is uh, a pain in the ass. You gotta go back with your paintbrush, water it down, you gotta like hand blend over it to wipe it out if you didn't catch it fast enough to wipe it off. But with metals, sometimes you go in there to try to wipe off that little speckle that you got out of the line and it'll just streak a bunch of metallic crap all over your green. So this is where you just gotta pay attention, you just gotta do the work. Moving along, uh, transitioning into this um, uh, next panel, like you, as you can see, like <laughs> I've been working on this panel for a while. Like this is the part that, like I said, it's just, there's no shortcuts here. You gotta just do the work. 
paint them solid metal, get the finish correct, paint them all. I mean, just be patient. I've said it a million times. You save a lot of time with the airbrush. You owe it to yourself to come back and put that time back in here and be methodical and be precise. We're gonna even hit these little bolts on the tracks down here. We're not gonna hit the, the little bolts, we're gonna hit the big old dicks down there. I guess they're the private axles to the uh, tracks. We're gonna paint them up, even though later in part two, I might even cover those up a little bit with a little bit of weathering. It still pays off to have all the details um, paid attention to. And you'll even notice, I didn't even show you this, but I used a little bit of dark green wash and I went inside some of the cracks up here on the side of the tank to reestablish definition. Uh, that is just one of those things, if you have extra time because you save time, do that extra work. But it's not 100% necessary, uh, but I do find it necessary on models that people are paying me to paint. So I try to do always that extra effort. I always try to go that extra mile for my clients so that I can continue to, to uh, you know, buy the buy donuts and cheese and crackers and bourbon. So there it is, already looking, shaping up. And now we're gonna go and we're just gonna slather on with our bigger brush. We're gonna just water down this army painter plate mail and we're gonna just start laying the metals on here in the back. And this is, um, you could like tape it off, tape it off, you can airbrush it in if you wanted to. But, you know, I find this to be just as easy, honestly. This whole process really doesn't take that long. It also gives me a little bit more control than I uh, trust myself sometimes with the airbrush because like I said, paint by numbers, worst thing that can happen is you tape it off and you didn't tape it off right and you peeled up some of that amazing green or even oversprayed onto it. Really hard to fix a subtle transition uh, that you did with the airbrush with a paintbrush, you know what I'm saying? Like going back is hard. So just be methodical. As you can see, that's a lot of metal. That's almost as much metal as green. But um, don't worry. We got more tricks up these sleeves, Holmes. They call me the magician. Going into the next simple trick. Number four, wash. We're actually experimenting here with the Vallejo uh, dark washes. This is a different type of wash. This is like wash concentrate. You, I like to water it down. I have like a 50-50 mix in one bottle and 100% pure like in a bottle cap near me. And I kind of just pit pull from both. Like I get some of that pure black onto the onto the metal and then I dip into my 50-50 solution and I just start spreading it around. This is kind of interesting, you know, like it, it's about as good as any other black wash that I've used, except that like, yo, know, economically, I've got a billion, you know, uh, gallons of wash now. Like I can turn this Vallejo dark wash into like a hundred containers of, you know, bad eye black from GW. Works out pretty good. It does have a slightly different finish depending on how hard you go in the paint on it. And since you can change the level of concentration by dipping into two different containers, you can draw those darker lines a little bit more with a little bit more contrast and you can wick away some of the surface area to not distort the flat areas. It actually does have a lot of application. I have been enjoying using it. Like I said, it, you can, out of the bottle, it's a little too dark. So you do have to, you know, get your water and your mixed game unlock. Is, it, and it does dry differently than GW wash too. Like it seems like everyone's got their own little unique formula. They all do a little bit different things. and. Part of this YouTube channel is, you know, let's go on a journey. Let's explore some of these differences together, you know. Um, moving along, we're going to just drop that wash. We're going to download literally a gallon of wash on the back chassis here. Get your big brush. Still, don't, it get, you know, you're going to want to like fling that wash around because it's like, oh, I got so much to coverage to, to get here. You don't want to fall out of that trap and start flinging that wash around and getting getting drops of it all over your green. Like I said, you're trying to protect that green. And I'm not trying to, you know, go back in time and, you know, tape stuff off and fix the green with the airbrush again. That's just, that shit is just straight dead to me. Going back to the arm repair plate mail now, this is where we got to do the work. We're going to go in there and we're going to re-highlight this metal. All the metal we just did. We're going to build back up on it. I'm going to subtly highlight an edge these little panels every single one of them i'm gonna make them interesting again because obviously they're a little dirty but i really want to draw contrast there to the peaks i really want to frame it a little bit and it is and i don't like to go super hyper on these types of highlights i like to keep them kind of subtle i want the metal to look worn dull like a realistic metal like it's not a mere finish it is worn but slightly well maintained you know like it's kind of in that in-between state of like you know we wash it, but um, it's an old vehicle. It's seen some shit, so you know we've done our best. You know, 
and you know we'll go further on that in part two we're going to use um some of the uh rizza rust that i'm known for we're going to use it in some more subtle ways in part two so look forward to some new uses of some old tricks from the next level painting lineup in part two of this video so there it is you know it's looking clean looking fresh like we said we've been, we've been paying attention doing our best that's all you really can do you know just do your best stay focused put the time in uh Cutting corners is something the airbrush uh, creates. Uh, it creates that bad habit in people. So just always remember it's a tool, and it's a tool that you can use more than once during a project. Now what we're doing is we're gonna dry brush, but like a little bit more of a lazy dry brush. We're not quite drying all that, that plate mail off the brush. We're letting it get kind of streaky. We're kind of letting it get built up. Uh, not insane mode, but like I said, it's kind of, I call it the lazy dry brush. And we're going through and we're just giving it some nice streaks, giving it a nice finish. It's hitting those raised areas. And since this is a kind of a real dull metal, it's not, you know, it's not jacking it up. It's not doing too much streaking, you know, like that's what I was saying about this army painter play metal. It's a solid metal. I recommend it to anyone wholeheartedly. And you can see, man, it's like, it's coming out good. The lazy dry brush, the highlights, they're looking fresh, man. And that brings us into simple trick number five. Typhus Corrosion, should have guessed it, literally, I love Typhus Corrosion, I would marry Typhus Corrosion. Lath like just get it slathered on to these tracks, like just build it up. You can let it get a little bit on the green, as long as you're gonna feather it out a little bit, because it is supposed to simulate a dirty textured effect here. I'm gonna just straight up coat these tracks. We're gonna let it dry all the way after a good coat, and we're gonna, you know, go back to that plate metal that I was just preaching to you guys, just giving you that sales pitch on. By the way, did you hear that Army Painter play metal is amazing? So there it is, it's all dried up. Uh, we put it under our fan for a while to accelerate the dry process and typhus corrosion, because that stuff does take a little bit longer to dry than actual paint, since it's this technical effect. And then we're gonna pull our paintbrush back out and we're gonna dry brush some of that metal back over, the metal we've been using the whole video. You can see it's already getting interesting. Typhus Corrosion is a must have for tank treads. Love it. It is great. I use it so often. I have literally a hundred bottles of this shit. It's just, but I go online and buy them up. If you sell them on eBay, I probably bought them from you. Well, this, this takes us into our bonus tip. Rizza Rust. Rizza Rust is also the truth. We're gonna also dry brush a little Rizza Rust onto these vehicles. Same situation. And this is going to be unique. This is part one of simple tricks to painting vehicles. I'm going to dry brush this Rizza Rust on here. And normally you'll see me like, you know, put it on things heavy like this. And I'm only going to put it on these tracks. But I promise you, I'm going to use Rizza Rust for like half of part two. And you're going to see me use it in a new way, a way you've never seen before. I'm going to really just attack this model, get into the, the nooks and crannies with Rizza Rust, and I'm gonna use a lot of water and I'm gonna thin it out and I'm gonna draw some streaks and I'm gonna really um, bring some contrast and some life to this model, like some subtle weathering effects. Here's a little sneak peek of what I was talking about. You can see all that Rizza Rush just subtle in there. A lot of technical elements in that model. We're gonna come back next week. I'm gonna hit you a part two and I'm gonna show you five simple tricks to painting realistic metals and realistic weathering effects. Anyway. Thanks for watching this video. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.